Hi, fourth grade. Welcome back. Today we are starting on our third branch of government, the judicial branch. Um, this is part of the Supreme Court or the Supreme Court serves under the judicial branch. They're also the ones that enforce the laws. So we're starting on lesson one and we're going to do the introduction in chapter one today. So today we are learning to understand how the Supreme Court works within the judicial branch to balance our government powers. We know we will be successful when we understand what the ju judicial branch's duties are and the process it takes to get a case to the Supreme Court. Some of our vocabulary for today includes the Constitution. So the 1787 document that explains the people's rights and the U.S. government's powers. The Constitution is really important for the United States, and we're going to continue to learn about this uh, throughout this unit. The next word is federal. This is relating to a form of government in which states are united under one central power. So there's a difference between state government and federal government. So the state would just be within Kansas for our state. Um, federal is for the entire United States. Our next vocabulary word is cases. These are lawsuits or legal actions brought to court. So you're going to hear about cases that are brought that the Supreme Court decides on, and they're the ones that are helping to enforce and make sure that those laws are happening. The last word is appeal. This is a legal process in which the losing side asks a higher court to review a lower court's decision. Um, the Supreme Court's the highest court in the United States, so a lower court might be something within your state or within your city. So that's what those are referring to as higher courts. So we're going to start with our introduction video, and our question today is how does the Supreme Court protect our rights? Is it true that thousands of legal cases are sent to the U.S. Supreme Court each year? Yes, but the court can handle only about 100 of them. It takes the cases that have the biggest impact on citizens' rights or that raise important legal questions. The Supreme Court heads the judicial branch of government. As the highest court in the land, its main job is to make sure the government follows the U.S. Constitution. The Supreme Court can overrule laws that go against the Constitution. In one of its most famous decisions, Brown v. Board of Education of Topeka, the court ruled that sending children to separate schools based on their race was unconstitutional. The court's chief justice and eight associate justices serve for life. They are appointed by the president with the approval of the Senate. These nine men and women play a vital role acting as a check on government power and protecting the rights and freedoms of U.S. citizens. To find out more about the Supreme Court, read the book. Okay. And we won't watch that again. <laughs> we haven't heard about Topeka in that, so Brown vs. Board, I hope a lot of you have visited there uh, before, but that was a court case that was handled by the Supreme Court, so the highest court in all of the United States um, to allow people of all colors to be able to go to school together. So we're going to read the Supreme Court. Um, it says, before they got this building, the Supreme Court justices met in a basement. So that's a little fun fact. Okay, the highest court in the land. So what is the Supreme Court? It is a group of nine judges known as justices. They make sure that the government follows the highest laws of the United States. They ensure every person has access to equal justi justice under the law. The Supreme Court is the highest court in the land. So over here it says, once appointed, Supreme Court justices can serve for the rest of their lives. So unlike the president or our Senate where they have um, a specific amount of years that they're able to, they can serve for as long as they would like. So over here in our caption it says, the nine Supreme Court justices posed for a group portrait in 2006. So these are all of the justices that served then. We might have different people now. Something you can look up. Okay, so now that we've talked about the three branches of government, I'm going to come over here for a second. We've already talked about the legislative, um, the executive, and now we're talking about the judicial branch. So going back to all of our items, the legislative branch, our top branch over here, that's part of our Congress and our Senate. Um, they're the ones that make the laws. So then we have the executive branch. That's our president. Um, they can sign or they can deny the laws. 
So then the last portion of that to make sure that everything is balanced is that our Supreme Court is the one who enforces these laws. They make sure that everything is running smoothly, that it has been voted on um, and should be held out. So the highest laws are written in the U.S. Constitution. Written in 1787, this document was created by the founding fathers to establish the U.S. government. The Constitution divides the government into three parts or branches. The legislative branch makes the laws, the executive branch carries out the laws, and the judicial branch interprets the laws and makes sure, makes sure they are used and applied fairly. Those are all of our balances. The judicial branch is made up of all the courts in the federal or national court system. These courts settle disagreements about what the federal laws mean. There are level, many levels of courts. Court trials or cases can begin in the lower courts. Some of those reach the highest ones, the Supreme Court. And over here, it says a handwritten copy of the Constitution is on display at the National Archives in Washington, D.C. Like I said, we're going to be continuing to learn about the Constitution as we move our way through this unit. Here it says the road to the Supreme Court. It is not easy to take a case to the Supreme Court. The process starts when the losing side in a trial decides to try again. They ask a higher court to review the lower court's decision. This is an appeal. So here it has the United States federal court system. So down here it says United States district courts. There's 94. Then you have the United States courts of appeals. And then you have the Supreme Court. So like they said, the highest one in our little pyramid here. Over here it states, the higher court has to agree to take the case. Then there is a new trial. If the higher court agrees with the lower court, the losing side can appeal to the next higher court. Appeals can continue until a case reaches the Supreme Court. In this way, the judicial branch is shaped like a pyramid, as we see over here. There are many lower courts at the bottom and the Supreme Court at the top. The number of courts where people can try their cases gets smaller as they move up the pyramid. And here in our caption for the pictures, it states, States have their own Supreme Courts. Here, the California Supreme Court judges listen to a lawyer present a case. So just like Kansas would have their own court as well. Each year, the Supreme Court receives thousands of requests from people who want their cases heard. It would be impossible for the justices to take every case, but they do review every request. They hold private meetings before deciding to take a case. Most requests do not make it past this meeting. At least four justices must approve a case before it can be heard. And here in our caption, it says, A cartoon from 1885 depicts Supreme Court justices being overwhelmed with requests to review cases from lower courts. So over here, what types of cases does the Supreme Court take? Some cases involve people or states who disagree over the meaning of a federal law. Other cases concern the Constitution itself. A group's actions might take away another person's rights, as explained in the Constitution, for example. The court also hears cases in which a lower court's ruling goes against an earlier Supreme Court decision. The Supreme Court sometimes uses these cases to fix mistakes made in the past. So the Supreme Court rules on about 100 cases a year out of about 8,000 requests. So they have to read through a lot of requests before deciding which cases they're going to take. Okay, today your journal questions are, number one, what is the role of the judicial branch? How do they keep the balance within our government? So really, what does the judicial branch do? Um, and how does it check and balance the other two option or two branches of our government? And question number two is, what is the process of getting a case to the Supreme Court? So you might want to pause the video, go back, replay some of the sections I just read that talk about how you get a case to the Supreme Court. Thanks, guys. Have a wonderful day.